It's time for that segment. I told you I had my MVP of the day, and you're probably wondering who is it? Who does this guy like? Who is his top player in the NFL today? I'm gonna surprise you a little bit. Let's take a look at the screen. <laughs> you know, I'm not the guy who, when I'm wrong, I'm not gonna say I'm not wrong. I'm going to admit to when I was wrong, and it's not even really saying I was wrong, but when I looked at Desmond Ritter last week, and I looked at his body of work up to this point, different types of games, I was not fond of what I was seeing. I saw a team with Arthur Smith, no urgency in the play call, and not pushing the football down the field. I ain't saw that today. Desmond Ritter is my quarterback and my MVP of the day on the offensive side of the ball. Now, there were some guys who could rival. Trevor Lawrence had a very good day, but he fumbled twice. Josh Allen had a pretty good day, but he lost. So we're looking at some of those other guys. Travis Etienne had a very big day. A lot of guys in the NFL, we can go with Devon A. Chan. We can go with Tyreek Hill. Different things, but I look, at De- I look at Desmond Ritter, and I come back to him, and I say, okay, what made you stand out? And when I say what made Desmond Ritter stand out for me, it's the fact that every single pass, every single yard in the one touchdown, although he only had one, had a rushing touchdown as well. Let's add that in there. But that is why they won that game. Defensively, I thought they stepped up big. TJ Stroud is still that guy. I mean, he he, he played really good in that game. We all saw that. But you, you get scored on and you lead your team back into field goal range. You win the game like that. And what I saw to Desmond Ritter, I want to give you a couple quotes as well, but I saw a guy who used his receivers. I saw a guy who processed on the football field. He was not just staring down his first read and throwing the football into a blind interception. Wasn't doing that at all. He was looking guys off. He was fitting the ball in the windows. Let me take you into these quotes. John U. Smith, tight end for the Atlanta Falcons, said he was phenomenal. I was impressed, but I wasn't shocked. This kid has got it, man. I know he takes a lot of heat. But he just wants to continue to improve and get better. Yes, he does. He's got the right tools. He's got the right mindset. When you got to tight end praising you like this, amongst all of the heat, B. John Robinson, he's standing up for you. The guys are standing behind you. Arthur Smith saying, okay, yeah, you know, maybe he hasn't played this well thus far. The Jacksonville Jaguars game was really ugly. The Detroit Lions game was really ugly. But he has the mindset. He wants to work and he wants to get better. We're not going to go to our backup quarterback just because the media wants us to. We know what we have in this room and we trust what we have in this room. Keyword that you just heard me say trust they trust Desmond Ritter and a lot of people because I dropped a video saying why the Falcons don't need Lamar Jackson and it, it's funny because this was with all the draft capital you were going to have to sign him and you were going to have to give up two first round picks I thought it wasn't a big I thought it wasn't really warranted to make that gamble when you had Desmond Ritter you still want to see what he's got and this is not saying he's a franchise quarterback, but he had a very good day. If I'm going to talk about him when he's bad, I'm going to talk about him when he's good. Let's give you another interesting stat. Through four games, and this is up to this point before today, Pitts had 11 receptions for 121 yards. He was averaging about three catches and 40 yards per contest. Drake London had a similar stat line. That's not good at all. Drake London hauled in 11 passes for 126 yards and two scores. Up to this point now. That's absolutely unacceptable. That's something that we look at and we say, why are we not getting our playmakers involved? We draft these guys both in the top 10, both elite guys at their position, not getting them the football, not getting them involved. We got to do better than that. So they did that this week. I think it was a point of emphasis for Arthur Smith, Desmond Ritter, and I've seen it on the football field. Now, I look at everything and say that CJ Stroud tried to put it into the party, but Desmond Ritter, he kept saying no. He kept saying no. And it was funny because Jimmy Ward, he had a quote. I'm going to play this quote for you right here. Take a listen. They got wide receivers if they use them. Uh, I don't think they want to, I don't think they're trying to pass the ball. They're trying to out physical teams and run the ball. And what we can see out of this quote, we just see the mindset that Jimmy Ward has. He did not respect Desmond Ritter at all. The, the, they said that they have outside receivers if they want to use them. <laughs> this is a guy that's saying they're not trying to pass. He doesn't think they're trying to pass. He understands they're a physical team. You got a Matthew Bergeron. You got a Chris Lindstrom, Jake Matthew, some of those other guys you want to run the football. And I think there's some truth to that. But the way in which he was wording it, he was basically neglecting all threats of the pass, saying it's no threat of Desmond Ritter. It's no threat of Drake London or Kyle Pitts. Not that they're bad, but because he doesn't know how to use them and he won't use them. So we saw that today. Hats off to Desmond Ritter. Has some very good stats. And like I said, this is a guy who had a very good day 28 of 37 again 329 yards 76 completion percentage touchdown in the air touchdown on the ground getting to my defensive guy though this is a nudson 
And, and I've been talking about Aiden Hutchinson for a long, long time because he's a problem. He's not James the problem Houston, but he's still a problem, but he's another problem. Although James Houston is hurt right now, Aiden Hudson has been holding it down. And he's a guy that he's now getting into that territory. And I think that a lot of people are really referring to Aiden Hudson as a star. Because it's funny, and I want to I want to name a couple weaknesses. Some of the things we heard in the draft process, some of the things we heard on the scouting report. This was a defensive end who was in Heisman candidacy. Played for Michigan, a very good football team when he was there, and they overthought it. Getting to the weaknesses, pure muscle mass might be maxed out. Is that really something we're putting on a scouting report? Pure muscle mass might be maxed out for Aiden Hudson, a defensive end coming into the draft. Q1 of overthinking. Looking at the second thing, below arm, below average arm length along the edge. Now, this is something I can agree with. He doesn't have the longest wingspan for a prototypical defensive end. It doesn't look like it's a problem, though. Right now, we're seeing it on the football field. Run game instincts are just average. I highly disagree with that. I don't see a guy who struggles in the run game at all. In fact, I talked about his rush game. I talked about his run defense last year, and I said that he was really good in this aspect. I want to see him improve and add more to his counter rush and some of those things in the pass rush game. I saw he was getting off blocks in the run game. I saw he was making tackles for loss in the backfield. He has the pursuit level. I don't understand some of these things that were questioned on the scouting report. Let me know what you think in the comments, of course, but I think this is just outrageous. Looking at some of these other things, plays the game in pieces rather than a continuous flow. Ask the Kansas City Chiefs if he plays the game in pieces. <laughs> I don't think they'll tell you that. Ask the Carolina Panthers if he plays the game in pieces. I don't think they'll tell you that. So I'm looking at that and I'm saying, okay, this is a guy who gets after it. And that's from snap to the end of the game. So I like that from him. And the last weakness that they had was he grapples rather than rids his defender as quickly as possible. So this is basically saying that instead of defeating the block, shedding, getting off of it quickly, he's engaging with these guys. He's grappling on two of these guys. And I think that it depends on the coaching scheme. It, it depends on what they're asking out of you. Are you asked to get to, are you asked to penetrate and get into the backfield? Or are you asked to really hold up a guy and get into that rushing lane? Different types of things, holding up a gap, two gapping it from the edge. I'm looking at all those things and I think they could be true. But I think these weaknesses are just keys of overthinking it. The guy had three tackles, had a sack, and had that big time interception. Bryce Young don't throw that ball no more. You have that screen. I don't think it's a great play, especially when you understand what is your personnel, what are you going against. Frank Wright, you called that one. Either just throw it in the dirt. That's the best thing I would say because it's not like it's not like Tommy, it's not like Ian Thomas actually that was the tight end. It's not like he was wide open and you just have a guy throwing in the football. Aiden Hudson was in that lane. So you're banking on, okay, I see this guy right here. Understand he's a Pro Bowl caliber player. He's an all pro caliber player that it's looking like right now. But do I think a defensive end can get a hand like this and make a one hander interception? You banked on that and you lost that bet. That's something I just say throw it in the dirt. I think that Bryce Young shows some flashes, has some things you can look forward to but overall that's a bad interception that I didn't like and also we're not going to even talk about the corner route you never throw that Jerry Jacobs was sitting on it he he wasn't biting down into the flat you see him flat footed he's reading and he has his eyes on the quarterback you throw that ball he's coming under and getting it he, he did that so that was two things that I saw uncharacteristic from Bryce but Aiden Hudson getting that pick super athletic play how many defensive ends will make that play and you're probably gonna say a lot the way the NFL is trending these guys are athletic freaks but you get my hats off defensive MVP of the day offensive MVP of the day as Desmond Ritter what do you think about those guys let me know in the comments also let me know your other candidates maybe I'll get them next week